Hello, hello, and welcome back to Rope Coaching. Today, we are joined by the one and only Josh Rundle. Hello. We have been coaching Josh for about six months remotely, yeah. and we're in the UK, so we actually get to see our client in person and favorite do some- client. Fa Favorite client. Don't tell anyone. We are going to get Josh on a few climbs, something a little bit easier, something medium, and then something a little harder for him. Um, and we're gonna see some of his errors that he's making and help him correct them. And then we'll also give you guys some tips at home that you can use to improve your own skills. The first climb we're gonna get on today is this red one. It's, I don't know the grading, but it's supposed medium. to be, yeah, more the medium range, but everything is like a little bit of a spectrum. So basically you're gonna climb it and then I'm just gonna like give you things after you're done. So climb it the way you would. Coming off. <laughs> that, cut that. Oh my god. Go on. Oh my god. Nice. I feel like I'm climb, trying to climb extra good, except it's because of the pressure. <laughs> How did you feel about messy. that one? Like I almost you, fell off going You didn't over. like yourself on the climb or you like how you climbed it or you didn't like the climb or both? Uh, didn't like myself on the climb. The climb was fine. So what like what do you think you could have done different or what are the points that you think that you like maybe My foot were... work felt messy. I definitely think on this climb, what I would see is that your hip placement um, this, yes, your foot placement was a little sloppy, but it wasn't the worst thing. I think Thank you. what you could work out a little bit better was like the hip and the body positioning. So I want you to think about like your hips opening up a little more when you need to, and then also sagging down into them versus like pulling more. Okay. Sometimes you pull to get your feet up yeah. versus being able to sit your hips closer to the wall and then get your feet up. Right. So instead of like every time we pull, you're exerting more energy mm -hmm. versus, and you're wasting energy. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get either if you're on a sport climb pumped more yeah. or on a boulder problem if it's long or if it's at your max, you're gonna make the moves harder if you're pulling versus like, getting your hips in and then using your skeleton to be able to move your feet up. This time we're gonna have Josh focus on just a couple things. I don't wanna overload you with all these things to think about. One, hips closer into the wall. Okay. Every time our hips come away from the wall, even an inch, then we're gonna be fighting gravity okay. more. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so, and also I want you to use momentum to get to the next hold. So if you see when I was going for a hold, I would more go like this and get a little momentum through my feet, yeah. which then goes into my knees, which then goes into my hip, then goes through the top of my body versus right. locking off and pulling. So generate okay. the energy from your feet, but your feet have to be on the hold nicely mm -hmm. to have that connection. Yeah, makes sense. So we start from the bottom up. Bottom up. Yes. Nice, 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 nice. Come on, come on, come on. And reset. Now we get momentum through your hips. That felt better, was it better? It was a little bit better. A little bit, not loads. A little bit better. But that's little, progression. Progression is like the key, right? So yeah. you want to always progress. Like no matter what we are learning, um, you're never going to be perfect when you're learning a new skill right away. Mm -hmm. But progression is the key. And the one thing I always like to have my clients take away if I'm doing in-person coaching is being able to recognize one's mistake. So they mm -hmm. have to, I'll point things out usually when they're climbing and they need to be able to recognize their own mistakes so that when they're on their own, they can fix it. Because you okay. can't fix what you can't see. So something that I like people to practice is, so our body's one chain reaction and to be able to use the whole body well, the energy starts at the feet and then moves up through our body and then we can move our hands through that energy. But if it's starting at the feet, we have to make sure that our feet are on these energy pods, which are the footholds, correct pods. Oh, energy okay. pods. Okay. And that's where the energy and electricity starts to get to the next hold. Yeah. Um, with that said, I'm gonna, you could be quite close. As hopefully I'm not gonna really fall on the first few moves of this. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you exactly what I want you to do, how we get the energy to get to the next hold. Yeah. So first I'm gonna show the incorrect way, inefficient. Okay. Not efficient doing it like this. Even though I could still do it. Where does that, the first thing that goes up is the, the arm. Yeah. 
blocks me. And even if I match my feet, but I'm pulling here, there's yeah. no play through my hip. Even that, so look at that, bad technique. So I could still do it, yeah. but it's not efficient. So this more efficient way, hips into the wall, neutral position. Yeah. To get to that next hold, think about a line. If this is neutral, I have to go the opposite direction. If my left hand's going there, I need to extend that line the opposite direction mm. and a little swing over. Then you do your feet. And same here, I would, instead of doing this, mm -hmm. I do this. I think I definitely do pull more. And then this move, which is when it's a bigger move, it's more autonomous and you just know you have to do it. Yeah. But use momentum to get to the holds. And even like here, I'd come down and in. Yeah. Here, up, over. So even that, I can obviously do this, yeah. but I'm gonna do this right. to be a little bit more efficient. We are moving on to a slightly steeper slab. Um, uh, and we're moving up the grades to a yellow, which is the second hardest, I think. Yeah. One thing you have to keep in mind when mm. it gets more overhung is that it is harder to naturally keep more weight on your feet. Yeah. So you are quite strong, actually, and you, you climb lower than the grade that you climb because not of your strength ability. Mm. I think it's more of your body awareness and technique. So if that was all... If that was good, I would climb harder. Yes, you'd be climbing awesome. harder grades and consistently if this more technique base was matching how strong you are. Okay. So on this, I don't want you just to be camping or cutting your feet everywhere. I want you to really think about okay. keeping your feet on when you can and being more efficient okay. versus getting to the top. Because okay. when I'm coaching someone, I don't care if they get to the top. I actually mm -hmm. rather them work on their technique or flaws or things they need to work on mm -hmm. and fall yeah. with improving those skills versus just getting to the top and whatever skills they already have if it's not working on something new. I wonder if that right foot's gonna slip off. Ah, nice. Yeah. Oh, no. It's Alex, I heard that. I heard it. My foot's gonna come off. And she was right. <laughs> God damn it. Well, did you really think that you were going to be able to reach this I am hold? I'm the tallest man in the world. Just think of reach that hold with your foot down there, or do you think that you may have needed to move your foot? Move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely move. Sometimes I would say, especially if there's someone else coaching that was, you know, focusing on competitions, mm. I'd really express to them that that could have been more like a tunnel vision like oh i'm getting higher up maybe you feel more tired you're feeling a little bit more stressed or you're like excited that you're getting more towards the top of the climb mm -hmm. and instead of thinking about the best bottle best possible body position to be in for mm -hmm. you know best chances of success you kind of just don't feel your body and you just go for the next hold <laughs> come on alex Oh, wow. Come on, Alex. Nice. I think the biggest difference is I've, over the years, have learned to take my time mm. and feel the best body position. So up here I paused a little bit because I had a heel and I thought, well, this heel feels really good right now. And if I cross, I'm not exactly sure how good these next two holds are going to be. Mm -hmm. And it might be harder to move my heel to a toe mm -hmm. after, if they are really bad. Right. So I made that decision, conscious decision then. I had a couple second debate, maybe slightly too long, but mm. then turned my heel to a toe beforehand, which made this move slightly harder, but then I didn't have to move it after that. So these little things like, I'm not trying to overthink when I'm climbing, but I'm feeling. And so those feelings are signaling to my brain, mm. what is the best way or the best, what, what chances do I have if I do this versus that? Right. So when I try to make an educated, decision with how I feel for the best chances of success. Nice. Be patient with all the foot placements. 
tight. Oops. Done. Nice. Come on. Nice rush. <laughs> it's really, I find it really weird to put the heel. It is weird. You do have, like... remember, you do have this toe hook, right? So you could have done left toe hook, then got your right heel there yeah. versus just cutting your feet. Come on. Yep. Brilliant. Work with the body. Use your hips to get to the next hold. Come on. Come on. Oh God, I'm tired. It was a little bit better. It was a little bit better. I want loads better. I don't want a little bit. A little bit every time. It'll go a long way. Um, I really like that you can keep foot tension on that little tiny yellow hold. Uh -huh. I liked that, well, one, you change the beta, but the things that you saw without me telling you is once you got the right heel yeah. and you started going out, you naturally was like, oh, you look to left, you're like, I can toe hook the other side of the wall. Uh -huh. So going to that felt a lot better. Yeah. Um, that's what I wanted you to see on your own, and which you did. Okay. Um, the things that I think you could still adjust and make a little better is one, when you put your heel yeah. on this big giant yellow one, your heel pointed left. like, no, it wasn't the, really the, it's like, if this is your toe, this is your heel, you're, it's pointed up. You really want to use your feet like hands. Yeah. And if you think about your bringing something in and using your whole leg, yeah. you want your toe to be pointed down more. So you go in this position right. versus you're like this. And uh, another thing is when you were um, going to these top holes, you still, in, and especially when you got this undercling here, yeah. you got into the position and you just stayed locked off. Right. And remember, and the more relax. you are stayed yeah. locked off and your hips are not like into the wall yeah. and they're more here, you're wasting more energy versus if you can be like this and putting more weight through your feet. Right. So you're just distributing your weight up the wall, right? right? Yeah. That's all we're doing when we're climbing is distributing your weight up the wall. Okay. So if you're pulling up, you have to be taking weight off your feet. Yeah. And if you're down here, you're putting more weight on okay. your feet if your arms are straight. Yeah. But that's why I say when you go to something, you use momentum yeah. and you don't pull. So you're taking yeah. a little bit of energy away from your arms and putting it up to your legs so you'd be less tired when you get towards the top of the wall. Size to the feet. Nice. Number hips. Come on. Nice. People feel it out. Nice. Hips a little bit, just a little. Okay. Yes. Better heel. Nice. Come on. It was better. Is that better? Better. Get, we're getting better. <laughs> that it feel, means more to me than sending. Progression. Progression. When you said hips here, yep. with the heel up, I found it really hard to know how much? How much, and I didn't want to yep. go too fast to, I know you say it's not necessarily speed, but in my head it's still speed. Yep. Like, so I, want, I started to go a bit faster and I slowed down to like, because okay. I knew I was strong enough to pull off that hold yeah. and lock over. But what happens when the holds get worse and you need momentum because mm. this is where you work on these skill sets when it's on easier climbs for us. And in some ways it does make it a little harder because you can just pull through, yeah. you know? And yeah. even when we're warming up, I always say, you're not just warming up your muscles, you're also warming up your mind and the mm. connection to your motor skills and everything. So that's why using all this like really nice, like good technique in your warm up is essential because yeah. you're also warming up the mind and body connection. Um, so you will find eventually like on some climbs, you're like, ah, oh, like I'm falling on this move over and over and over. And maybe it might be something where Let's say you have to be slightly locked off, but you're on two crimps and you're going up left to something and it's a quite a big move mm -hmm. and it's too hard to do this, but you need to go yeah, yeah. have some momentum. And then you start feeling it and you're like, ah, that's like a aha light bulb moment mm -hmm. where you're like, I get it now. It's working. I need that momentum versus just like that lock off, like is just too hard to do that move. Yeah. Just being aware is the first step. Okay. Being aware in your own climbing when you're making these mistakes, and then when you're failing on something, you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I remember these things that I need to work on. If it's, you know, better heel hook, hips in, straighter arms are using that momentum. Mm -hmm. And then you do the move using those new techniques. And then you're like, oh, I'm starting to understand it a little bit more and more. So we are doing one last climb. Uh, we're doing something that's 
slopey and a little bit more body position oriented. So he's going to have to feel more and be aware of his body versus just pulling and getting away with using some of his default climbing styles. Come on, tight. I can't get over. Come on. Wow. So you're you're reading this as a like kind of a one-two. I really wanted to match this and keep the foot, but I think it is. That is quite. I think it is a one-two. When I'm thinking of like rough draft climb or beta for the climb, I do try to see like things that are maybe uh, these pivotal points of the climb. Like I know for sure I'm going to do this, or I need left hand there, or I need right hand there, or so if there's a little standout things, or if something's like a one-two, or if there's a knee bar or whatever it may be, a smear like keep those little mental notes like I know I need to do that and then everything around it could be subjected to how it feels while I'm climbing it so okay. like here the one two um, I haven't tried it yet but I would say most likely that is what I am reading even trying harder or climbing, that's better oh. 360 canvas whoa oh my god the things that go through my mind when I first first attempt tried the little double yeah First thing I thought is, well, the foot's really far from me. Mm -hmm. I was still able to use it. Tried the one, two. Then I thought, oh, doesn't feel very likely for me right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, let's get creative. If mm -hmm. that doesn't feel like it's gonna go, I thought, well, there's starting holes. It doesn't say which hand you can or mm -hmm. cannot have it on. So I thought, well, if I'm here and I know I'm stronger versus being coordinated right now, right. maybe if I have my hips in, for me at least, maybe I could do this instead of having to do a coordination. Right. Um, could be more likely for me to do it that way. The other thing I did think is when I was here, I could potentially get a heel up, then come in, which I do think that's gonna be hard as well, yeah. Yeah. but I haven't tried it yet. So there's, you can think outside the box. Oh. So before I pulled on. I did have the best position. I do like sit here, so I get that and then I like, I find where I can like you are pinching, aren't you? setting up perfect so that when I go I here, really use the thumb, then yeah. I didn't really use a thumb. I just like no, you, you know, rushed I it. it. Again, even setting up, I mm. feel it out versus yeah. like okay, what feels the best way so that and if you watch people in World Cups, mm -hmm. because every count matters, right? Mm. So they'll be turning around, looking at it, feeling different things because you can feel the starting holds and mimic the positions before you even pull off the ground. Right. So think of that in a sense as well where the same thing here in concept is like kind of feeling it. And then if you're like, oh, I greased it up, well then you could just be patient, take the brush after you find the position, then brush it, then start again. Yeah, you yeah. So you're gonna stay tight on the foot and the core here too. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Nice, Alex. Come on. Come on. Yes. No, that was oh. it. That, that was it. really good. I think that's what you need to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Come, on. come on, Alex. Nice, 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 nice. Come on. Oh, there we go. Wow. Come on, Alex. Come on. It's good, this one. Nice. Well, the left hand is not good. Nice. Goodness gracious. What? She's definitely been spending time in the UK. My God. Oh. That was very beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh. That was not easy. I'll tell you the worst hold was the one that I thought I was going to like the most was the crimp. That <laughs> crimp was awful. Goodness gracious. Oh. Well done. This is a perfect example of keeping tension on the left foot. Mm -hmm to stay under. I know you're taller, but you still, which longer levers does make this slightly harder yeah. to keep tension, is that you keep tension there so that you can go really slow here. I feel like I'm, when, but if I, okay, so when I'm on it, I feel like I'm sagging my bum. So you're saying bring it in, but then I feel like my, I'm having to bend my arm a lot. There's the an, so you could be like this. So, so it's not like this, it's like. Okay, okay. Before you come in. Does. Oh. You see how the foot comes off? Yeah. Oh, I can, I can feel my, my core Let's try giving, it. I'm going to give up. you like a pound this time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh. I did like absolutely nothing. Oh. Like, I don't even think that was a pound. It was like not even half a pound. It's like 
So what happens when you're power spotting someone? Sorry. Do you want me to help you? Oh, oh. Please. <laughs> and that brings us on. Oh! More nipples. That's right, that's a freebie, like but the, ne the next the paid. <laughs> so I do like the technique of having a power spot sometimes mm -hmm. and to have it like if a move is just not connecting, like right there, I think it's just the motor skills were not connecting and it's not that you don't have it in you to do that move, is yeah. that you weren't like understanding that I needed to put more pressure on this foot or tighten the core, but sometimes it's the core will be tightened by our hips into the wall, which starts at the foot. And if you don't have the foot tension, you don't have the hip tension, which then you don't have the core tension. Yeah. Okay. So you'll be a little bit more saggy. Yeah, yeah. So all I did is I put my hands, the first time maybe a couple pounds, mm -hmm. did the move. The second time it is not even half a pound. And mm -hmm. I don't know the kilos, but like it's nothing basically. Yeah. And it was almost there to remind you to stay tight and activate. And with that like signal, it like, well, it went to your brain to say, oh, I needed to activate this. And then you could do the move just about. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, that was better! That was better! He's good. I think it's... The next hold, it gets better. Yes! Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, push through. Come on, come on. Yes! Nice! Come on, come on. Put up, smear. Yes. Come on, relax. Not the tunnel vision. Last hole's good. Come on. Nice. Oh. Boop, boop. Feel progress. I feel like I'm thinking a lot more. Yeah. Well, which you're is gonna, saying something for me. Well, it's like, remember, eventually you'll, like, when I did that move, I just, you know, helped coach you through the, the, the crimp is bad, right? Yeah, and yeah. then when you, once you use momentum to get out to it, then it, it feels so much a easier. Exactly. Going from being impossible, if I was just trying to pull through with a crimp like say, yeah. I'd never be able to do anything. And like right now, you had to think about it, like you said, you're thinking more. But eventually, you won't have to think that once you practice it so much. Mm. And that's the thing. Like when I was there, I didn't. I just knew it felt bad, so I felt it, and I was like, well, I know I just need to use my momentum to go because yeah. I'm not going to be able to just hold that right now. So then eventually you will. It'll be flipped that your body will just do it because it doesn't feel right. It'll yeah. know what to do. So Josh, mm. we did some really cool climbs today, yeah. some hard ones, some a little bit easier ones. Uh, what did you think about it? Well, it was good. I definitely learned a lot. I think it's always hard to know what you need to improve in your climbing when you're by yourself, or because you then you don't you just don't have that second opinion and second professional opinion. And I did not think that like technique or body position was necessarily a huge issue of mine. It started to like slowly come to my mind, but it's taken a long time. But if we'd started <laughs> working together a lot sooner, then I would have improved it a lot sooner. And it's definitely, it's an obvious weakness. Cause I, I always, you know, always wonder, like, I feel like I'm pretty strong sometimes. Like, well, why am I not climbing harder? And maybe this is why. So hopefully I'll be, now be the next Adam Andra. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the neck. Got the neck. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, like I think like, yeah, I, I said earlier, you are super strong mm. um, and your strength is not necessarily the reason why you or lack of strength, the reason you're not at a, a grade above where you are already mm -hmm. or sending the climbs that you're kind of projecting right now. Um, and it's a whole package. Like, yes, can you always get stronger? Of course. But can you, if your technique or whatever is down here and your strength is up here, well, you're going to be kind of like, you know, split in the climbs that you get on mm -hmm. and be at a certain type of climb versus we want to become a more well-rounded climber. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so I think like you're on your way to that and being able to see your own flaws and mistakes on your own mm -hmm. um, is going to be really beneficial because then you can start correcting them and fixing them. Mm -hmm. So even if you're on this remote training plan, when you have these in-person in -person sessions here there, then you can actually see like, okay, this is what I need to do while I'm working on the remote plan and yeah. not just like using my old habits. Yeah. Thank you for watching this episode um, on Rope Coaching YouTube channel. And, like and if you liked it, click like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Let's do it now. Let's do it. Listen to me. It takes no time at all. No time at all. Press the button. Doesn't make any difference to you. But it makes a difference to Robin and Alex. Look at them. Look how happy Alex will be if you no. press subscribe. Do it now. You still haven't done it, have you? Why? What are you doing? Come on. Press it. <laughs>